Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this unusual planet known as WASP-121b. This planet seems to be losing a lot of its atmosphere, to the point where it creates a kind of a river-like formation that you see behind it that's essentially made up of helium and hydrogen but also metals like iron and magnesium and that's what makes it so unusual and so weird. It's literally leaking metals into the outer space. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now we've actually talked about this planet uh, before because it's probably one of the most well-studied exoplanets when it comes to um, its atmosphere. The first time we talked about this planet is when we discovered that there is water in the atmosphere. So yeah, there is a lot of really interesting things here. And this discovery is actually part of the so-called panchromatic comparative view of exoplanet atmospheres that used quite a few various exoplanets and tried to analyze the evolution of atmospheres in all sorts of unusual planets, including these ones that are known as hot Jupiters. Now WASP-121 is a super weird planet compared to anything we have here in the solar system. First of all, this is known as a hot Jupiter. It's an object that's more massive and larger in size than Jupiter. So here's roughly how it compares to Jupiter that's on your left. And this is sort of what it looks like, except that we think it's also a lot longer in shape. In other words, it's sort of stretched, because if you look on the other side of the planet, you'll notice that it's extremely close to its parent star, WASP-121. And because of this, it's actively being stretched by the tidal effects from the star, turning it into a kind of a melon-like formation or melon-like shape. So basically, this is a super weird object, and it's right on the limit of tidal breaking point, meaning that it might even fall apart completely. And by the way, here is how Earth compares to all of this. There is a tiny planet Earth in comparison to WASP-121b. Now, the main purpose of this study is to actually try to analyze the primordial atmospheres of planets so we can learn how planets like Earth are formed and how they acquire their atmospheres and how they evolve atmospheres. But to learn all that, we need to take a look at these ancient giants known as hot Jupiters and various other exoplanets that we just don't have here in the solar system. So in order to learn all of this, the scientists had to take a look at WASP-121b at this position. When it passes in front of the star, we can actually zoom in to the location right here and see the atmospheric composition by looking at the light as it passes through the layer in between the planetary surface and the star itself. And what the scientists discovered this time is that not only does it have water and helium and hydrogen like most gas giants, it also seems to possess metals in the atmosphere that are actively being stripped from the planet and turned into this river-like formation behind the planet. So there is literally a river of metal coming from the planet itself. Now the mechanism is still not entirely understood, but the scientists think that the way that this happens is Due to the amount of hydrogen and helium that this planet loses, some of those molecules of hydrogen and helium actually grab the metal molecules and basically take them for a ride, making them escape the atmosphere of the planet and uh, making them leave the planet, forming this beautiful tail-like formation behind the planet. As you can probably imagine, it's a very efficient way of losing mass for the planet. So we think that um, in a few million years, there's going to be basically no atmosphere left, and it might become what's known as a Ketonian planet. These are types of planets that have nothing but the core of the actual gas giant left after the star burns everything from the surface, all of the atmosphere is gone, all of the lighter particles are gone as well, and only the super heavy, super thick, and super dense core is left behind. And Ketonian planets have um, only been a hypothesis, we haven't really discovered ones where we can confirm for a fact that it's a Ketonian planet, but it's a very interesting concept, and we think that this is kind of what happens to many of these hot Jupiters that we discovered in our galaxy so far, because they do have to, at some point, stop losing mass, and either basically get destroyed and then fall into the star, or possibly turn into this unusual object known as a Ketonian planet. And interestingly, one of the main reasons why this unusual planet is losing so many different materials, and specifically metals, which we've never seen before, 
is not really because it's hot or because it's so close to the star, but for two main reasons. One of them is um, that it's actually kind of stretched, like I mentioned, it's tidally disrupted. And the other main reason is that because it's poofed up, it's basically larger in size than it should be. So as you can see, Jupiter is smaller in size, this planet is larger, and because of this, its density is lower, and because of that, its surface gravity is lower. As a matter of fact, the surface gravity of this planet is just a little bit higher than the surface gravity of planet Earth. Which is one of the main reasons I even put Earth for comparison here, because the gravity here on the surface is pretty much similar, or just a little bit lower, than the gravity you would experience by standing on the surface of the planet that's much, much larger and more massive. And so by standing right here on the surface of this planet, you'll experience about 11.1 meters per second square of gravitational attraction, whereas on our beautiful planet Earth, it's roughly around 9.8. So the actual difference is quite minuscule. But the main difference, of course, is that this object is a lot hotter and doesn't really have a surface to stand on. And we also believe that by losing these metals um, from its atmosphere and by having a lot of magnesium and iron very close to the um, upper atmosphere here, the star becomes more opaque. It doesn't actually uh, let through as much ultraviolet light anymore and thus heats up even more, reaching uh, temperatures of roughly around 2500 degrees Celsius. That is pretty hot. That's basically 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, we're still not entirely sure how all of this will end and what's going to happen to this unusual exoplanet, but there are several possible resolutions. One of them is, of course, that this planet becomes a Ktonian planet, like I mentioned. The other resolution is, well, maybe, just maybe, it falls apart and turns into a ring formation around the star. But the third resolution is that, well, it could get swallowed by the star itself, and become part of the star, become another object that enters the star and turns into its nuclear fuel. We don't really know what happens, but I'm sure one day we'll discover another exoplanet that will be kind of like looking into the future of what happens here. In other words, we'll probably find something that will teach us what happens to these objects and how the evolution of these objects evolves with time. But before we finish this video, I wanted to try to simulate what would happen to our own Jupiter and also our own planet Earth if we were to place it just as close as the WASP-121b is from its parent star. This is WASP-121 parent star, and here is how it compares to our own Sun. You can see that it's more massive, it's also larger in size, so it obviously produces a little bit more energy and more heat. So the Jupiter placed here will probably get hot pretty quickly. And with an orbit that takes roughly around 1.2 days, um, basically a single year here is only 1.2 days long, we're probably going to experience um, a very quick disintegration of our beautiful neighbor Jupiter. So let's give it some time here to get heat up and let's see what happens to this beautiful planet and then do the same with our planet Earth. Here, if I accelerate time, you'll see that um, it actually starts getting heat up pretty quickly and at some point we'll reach the same sort of temperature as uh, the exoplanet I showed you previously. And so in essence, this is kind of what it looks like um, for our own Jupiter to be around the star. But I guess it would be a lot more interesting to see what happens to our planet Earth if it's in the same position around the same star. And there you go. There is that interesting tale of material that it acquires right away. The atmosphere was literally stripped from our planet in something like three hours of real time, and it turns into a hot bowl of lava. Now, this is a typical Ktonian planet. This is literally what it would look like after losing all of the atmosphere. But in this case, our planet didn't really have much to lose to begin with. So anyway, so that's kind of what would happen to planet Earth if it was placed in this position and also to our neighbor Jupiter, both of which have become super hot glowing balls of material. On that note, that's all I wanted to show you in this video, and if you'd like to learn more about the study itself, you can find it in the description below, and all of the details are there as well. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.